I've spent the past five, almost five years preparing myself for today. A decision months in the making. To not punish the, this, the worst high school shooter in U.S. history. How can you say yes to every single aggravator and then no to the death penalty? Jurors sparing the Parkland school shooter's life. I hope he has the fear in him every second of his life, just the way he gave that fear to every one of our loved ones. What about the kids? What about the families? It's not about the shooter. You set a precedent today. You set a precedent for the next mass killing, and nothing happens to you. The jury foreman responds to the decision. I don't like how it turned out, but it's that's how the jury system works. Tonight, CBS4 has extensive live team coverage after jurors decide life in prison. This has been a long, painful trial for the families of the victims. And as you heard, they are very disappointed by the jury's verdict. We have live team coverage tonight. We're going to hear from those families, the jury foreman, as well as legal experts. But we begin with CBS 4's Joan Murray, who's been following this trial from the beginning. Joan, you have reaction from both the prosecution and defense. And to say that this verdict was unexpected is an understatement. The anger and pain felt by the families and expressed by the families, um, you, you cannot describe. It is almost as strong as when this tragedy happened nearly five years ago. And many of the family members are blaming at least one jury member for being able to sway the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my understanding that you have reached a verdict in this case. It's a verdict that stunned the courtroom. The Parkland shooter sentenced to life in prison, not to death. We, the jury, unanimously find that the aggravating factors that were proven beyond a reasonable doubt outweigh the mitigating circumstances. No. And as it became clear, a wave of tears, disbelief and anger swept over the courtroom, filled with the families of the 17 he confessed to killing at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School four years and almost eight months to the day. Lori Aladev, whose daughter Alyssa was shot eight times, buried her head. Fred Guttenberg, whose daughter Jamie's future was snuffed out running for her life, prayed for a different outcome, only to learn it would be the same. Nick Dwaret's mother wept bitterly. I'm disgusted with our legal system. I'm disgusted with those jurors. I'm disgusted with the system. That you can allow 17 dead and 17 others shot and wounded and not give the death penalty. What do we have the death penalty for? I don't know how this jury came to the conclusions that they did today, but 17 families did not receive justice. The shooter tapped his hands nervously as he learned his fate, his chief lawyer clearly relieved, and her boss calling the jury's decision courageous. And for this jury to stand firm to their oath and their commitment, to hear all the evidence, to weigh it carefully, and to render a verdict is very important. It's more important that we as a community respect the jury's verdict and recognize that the jury's verdict is final. Now, the judge was ready to impose a life sentence. One of the prosecutors stood up and said no, that she wanted a delay until early November when the families of the victims and even those who were shot and survived could come in and give statements. The judge said yes, so that will be the next phase of this process. Reporting at the Broward County Courthouse, Joan Murray, CBS 4 News. Certainly a very heavy and emotional day for those families. Thank you, Joan. Very difficult day. Thank you, Joan. The families of the Parkland shooting victims are being very vocal about their anger and hurt over the jury's decision. Our team coverage continues with CBS Force Gabrielle Arzola. She has the reaction tonight, and Gabby, family members not holding anything back. That's right, Nasha Elliott. For months, the families here have been quiet, but today, that silence quickly ended. What about the kids? What about the families? It's not about the shooter. Why can't they do something 
that's helping them. When the verdict was reached, families were left in shock, but not at a loss for words. Nothing the defense said. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It shouldn't have been a case at all. No excuse for letting this piece of garbage breathe. You can imagine the variety of emotions they're feeling, pain. There's no closure. There's no closure when, you, when your son is murdered. Shock. I couldn't believe my ears. And others simply flabbergasted that the evidence just wasn't enough. This is what the jury didn't think was worth capital punishment. One topic often brought up by the families was the question of how this could set a precedence for future crimes. If not now the death penalty, then when? Mm -hmm. When? They question what justice is there if a person can kill 17 people in cold blood and live. We came here seeking justice. We were hoping for justice. And unfortunately, we didn't get it today. Later on after that, I asked victim Joaquin Oliver's sister, Andrea, how she can possibly move on after this. And she looked at me for a moment. She took a breath and she said, you don't move on after this. You just live with it. Guys. Yeah, they may never be able to process it. Gabby, thank you very much for the live report from the courthouse. Manny Oliver, the father of Joaquin Oliver, did not speak after the verdict, but did tweet this. He says, quote, mass murders, you get to live your natural life. You get your three hot meals a day. You get to shower every day, get medical attention, even get a hobby or a new education. What a great message this is sending, end quote. Oh, that is raw pain right mm -hmm. there.